Please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. Alright, guys and girls. It's time to get cracking. All right, you guys, today we're going to be talking about alcohols, and alcohols are awesome. And the reason why they're awesome is because number one, they're cheap, and number two, they're super useful. And this is exactly what you're looking for in a compound. You want a compound to be cost effective, and you want to be able to do lots of different types of reactions with it. Okay, so today we're going to be showing you how to turn an alcohol into a bunch of different types of compounds. Okay, so we'll show you how to turn an alcohol into a compound that has a good leaving group. Take an alcohol, turn it into a nucleophile. Take an alcohol and turn it into an alkene. And lastly, take an alcohol and turn it into aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids, okay? So there's a bunch of different types of reactions you can do with alcohols, which makes them super useful. And the nice thing is, is that we've actually already learned how to do a couple of these types of reactions. We've already seen how to turn an alcohol into a nucleophile in the ethers chapter. And we've seen an alcohol turn into an alkene in the elimination reactions chapter. Okay, so we'll go over these briefly today, but go back and look at the ethers and the elimination reactions chapter if you want to study these in detail. Today we're mainly going to be talking about how to turn an alcohol into something with a good leaving group on it, and also into aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids, all right? All right, so let's talk about some general information before we get into the details of any one of these reactions, okay? So, hey, first things first, what is an alcohol? Well, we've been pointing to this guy. An alcohol is just an R group, an alkyl group, with an OH stuck on it, an all group stuck on it. So that's why they call this thing an alcohol, right? You've got an alkyl group with an all group on it. So an alkyl hall, an alcohol, okay? So I don't know if that's the actual reason why they call this an alcohol, but that would make sense, right? Okay, so we're going to be taking this alcohol and turning it into a bunch of these different types of compounds. Why do we want to do this? Let's look at the big picture. Okay, so big picture, you guys. Where are we going with these reactions? Well, let's take it one at a time. Okay, so, hey, take an alcohol and let's turn this thing into something with a good leaving group on it. Okay, so say you start out with an alcohol and you turn it into say an alkyl halide, okay, so an alkyl group with a good leaving group on it, such as a halogen, okay, so turn an alcohol into something with a good leaving group on it, like an alkyl halide. What types of reactions do you do with an alkyl halide? Substitution reactions, right, like SN1, SN2. So we're turning this alcohol into an electrophile so that you can do substitution reactions on it. That means if you bring in a nucleophile, you can come into do a substitution reaction on this, kick off the leaving group, and do your substitution reaction like we've done before, okay? So turn an alcohol into something with a good leaving group on it, like an alkyl halide, and that way you can bring in a nucleophile to do a nucleophilic substitution reaction on this thing, okay? Okay, so in this first example, we turn an alcohol into an electrophile so we can participate in a nucleophilic substitution reaction. In the second example, we're going to turn an alcohol into a nucleophile this time, so it could also participate in a nucleophilic substitution reaction, okay? So, I turn an alcohol into an RO minus, and that's a great nucleophile. It's got a negative charge on it, right? So, if you throw this in with something like an alkyl halide, this is going to do a great nucleophilic substitution reaction. Okay, so for these first two examples, we're turning an alcohol into something that can participate in a nucleophilic substitution reaction. In this first one, we turned it into an electrophile so it could get attacked by a nucleophile. In this next one, we turn an alcohol into a nucleophile so this nucleophile could then go on to attack another compound. Okay, so 
and alcohol gets turned into both of these so it could participate in nucleophilic substitution reactions, but in this case, it was the electrophile, and in this case, it was the nucleophile, okay? And this third type of reaction, where we turn an alcohol into an alkene, a double bond, this is great because alkenes can undergo all those addition reactions we saw before in the alkenes chapter. Remember you guys, if you took an alkene and you added something like H2O, H2SO4, this would eventually give you something like this. It was an addition reaction. We added water to this double bond, to this alkene. And there was a bunch of these that we learned. We learned hydration, halogenation, hydroboration, oxidation, all those good addition reactions from the alkenes chapter. You can now do to these alkenes. After you turn an alcohol into an alkene, do all the addition reactions you want, okay? And this fourth reaction where you turn an alcohol into all these guys, aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids, these are super useful. We haven't learned these yet, but when you get to the aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids chapters, you're gonna see how much more chemistry you can do with these types of compounds, okay? So I think you're starting to get the idea that an alcohol enables you to do a bunch of different types of reactions because you can turn an alcohol into a bunch of different types of compounds that are then able to do a bunch of different types of reactions. You can do substitution reactions. You can do addition reactions with alkenes. And then you're going to do a whole bunch of other types of chemistry with these types of compounds and you'll see this in later chapters, okay? Okay, so just to clarify something, because I think this is a little confusing the way it's written up here. All I was referencing when I wrote down ethers and elimination reactions was that we've learned these reactions before. How to turn an alcohol into an RO minus, we learned this in the ethers chapter. How to turn an alcohol into an alkene, we learned this in the elimination reactions chapter. And I was just writing this up here so that if you want to go back and look at these in detail, then go back to the ethers chapter and go back to the elimination reactions chapter to learn how to go from alcohol to this and alcohol to this, okay? These reactions that we did down here, well, these two were substitution reactions, and then this one was an addition reaction, okay? So if you want to review those, go back to the nucleophilic substitution reactions for these two, and then go to the addition reactions, the alkenes chapter for this one, okay? Okay, so let me go ahead and erase this and we can talk about these reactions one at a time. But just keep in mind why we're doing this, why we're turning an alcohol into these different types of compounds, is so that we can use them in different types of reactions. Okay, so say you wanna do a nucleophilic substitution reaction, turn an alcohol into one of these guys. Say you wanna do an addition reaction, turn an alcohol into an alkene. Say you wanna do aldehyde, ketone, and carboxylic acid chemistry. Turn an alcohol into one of these guys, okay? So this is the power of alcohols. It's in their versatility. You can take an alcohol, turn it into these different types of compounds, which are then capable of doing these different types of reactions that you want. And better yet, you guys, alcohols are cheap, right? So you can buy a bunch of alcohols for cheap and then turn these into more expensive compounds. If you were to buy an alkene or an aldehyde ketone or carboxylic acid at the store, these would be very expensive on their own. Okay, so if you have an unlimited amount of money, that's fine, whatever, just start from this step. But for most of us in lab, we don't have that much money, so we start out with a cheap alcohol, turn these into more expensive compounds, save ourselves the money, and still be able to do these different types of reactions that you want. Okay, so this is what's great about alcohol. They're cost effective, and you can use them in a bunch of different types of reactions by turning them into these compounds, okay? One thing to mention here before I erase this stuff, and that is with this addition reaction. Here we have a double bond reacting with H2O, H2SO4, and you are gonna get an alcohol, but it's not gonna be this one. It's gonna be the more substituted alcohol with the OH here and the hydrogen there, okay? You can make this alcohol too, but it would be a, with a different reagent. Do you guys remember which reagents? It would be with hydroboration oxidation, right? BH3THF and NaOH H2O2. But hey, if you don't remember that, just go back to the addition reactions chapter. It's all there for you. I just wanted to make sure that this is correct in your notes, okay? Let's go ahead and erase this stuff now.
All right, so this is our agenda for the day. I just redrew our diagram up here. So as you can see, we're gonna turn an alcohol into something with a good leaving group and an alcohol into a nucleophile. And we're gonna do these two types of reactions so that we can later do SN1, SN2 nucleophilic substitution reactions. We'll also take an alcohol, turn it into an alkene so we can do addition reactions. And we'll take an alcohol and turn it into an aldehyde, ketone, and carboxylic acid. I only drew up a carboxylic acid up here because there wasn't enough room, but we're gonna learn how to do all of those, turn an alcohol into an aldehyde, ketone, and carboxylic acid so that we can later do mystery reactions, which we'll learn in a later chapter, okay? But first we'll start out with turning an alcohol into something with a good leaving group, this first reaction up here, okay?